Question four uh, from a colleague in Canada, a research assistant in Canada. Given the modest changes seen in the Arab world in the wake of the Revolutionary Spring, please explain and quantify NATO's capacity to establish effective partnerships with Arab countries other than those which had already been explicitly pro-Western and or hosting U.S. troops. Well, NATO has relations with 11 uh, or 10 Arab countries, formal bilateral relations, through the Istanbul Cooperation Initiative. Uh, and the Mediterranean Dialogue. These go very well. We have a big set of tools for partnership on a whole host of areas from border security to demining to, uh, of course, just security, count, uh, security consultations or teaching English, uh, where we can share experiences and do things together. They identify their priorities and we can work with them in these two separate frameworks to, uh, to do more together. But in fact, NATO is reaching even beyond uh, these two frameworks. First, to be able to do things in a more flexible way so we can meet uh, around issues like cyber defense or maritime security. But secondly, NATO is also reaching out, for example, to the Arab League, uh, which played such an important role over Libya, uh, and which includes countries which aren't historically friends of NATO. Uh, we've reached out and support, uh, in a very practical sense, the African Union. We airlift their troops in and out of Somalia. We help uh, build their capacity. And again, not all the members of that organization are traditional friends of NATO. Uh, and we're starting now also to engage with the Gulf Cooperation Council. So uh, in fact, we can do a lot. We do do a lot with these countries. Uh, and I think actually the future of our engagement with the region is quite bright. What Libya showed us is there isn't the distrust of NATO uh, that many of us, including me, uh, were concerned about. Uh, and there's plenty of scope for more cooperation.